Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today we're finally getting to that red breast vertical I've been promising for about a month. <laughs> but I'm finally here and this is gonna be awesome. I've got the 12, the 12 cast strength, the 15, the 21, the Lestau and the PX edition. So let's talk a little bit about each one of these and then we'll get into the tasting. First up is the Red Breast 12. This iteration was introduced in 2000, but Red Breast 12 and Red Breast have been around for quite a while. If you want to learn more, go check the link up there for the history, but I'm not going to go into that here. This has been around since 2000. It's 12 years old. It is chill filtered and it is artificially colored. It's aged in X bourbon barrels, first and second fill. It's 40% and it's about $60. So let's go into the cast strength. The Red Breast 12 cast strength is one I really love. This comes out in batches a couple times a year. This one is B219. So this is from a little while ago. Some of the newer ones have been getting a little bit of different flavor profile as far as reviews go. So take that with a grain of salt. This one's 12 years old. It is not chill filtered and it is not artificially colored. So that's good. It is X bourbon X sherry casks. It's 55.8% ABV and it's about $100. The Red Breast 15 has been around since 2005. It's 15 years old. It is not chill filtered. It might have caramel coloring. It's a little hard to tell. I couldn't find definitive yes or no. So if you know, let me know in the comments. Matured in X bourbon barrels. It's 46% and it's going to cost you about $130. You all voted on the poll to have me include the 21 in this list, so here it is. And the patrons actually encouraged me to buy it, so thank you guys very much. I appreciate that. So, with the 21, it's 21 years old, of course. It was first released in 2013. It is not chill filtered. It is not colored. It's X bourbon and X sherry casks, as you would expect. It's 46%, which, like, is fine. I'm just a little surprised it wasn't a little higher, but whatever. I mean, they know what they're doing then it's going to cost you about $400. I actually got this quite a bit cheaper. I think I just got a good deal. Um, I'd have to look at the receipt, but call it about $300. The Red Breast Lestau is one that's been a little hard to find the last couple of years, but it was first introduced in 2016. It is no age statement, but believed to be about 9 to 12 years old. It is non-chill filtered and non-colored, which makes sense because you're also aging it in X bourbon and X Oloroso sherry casks. So you're going to be getting some coloring from that. It's 46% and this is going to cost you about $70. This is the Red Breast PX edition. It was a little bit hard to find. I bought it when it was new, back in 2021 when it was first released. But even then it was a limited edition and it disappeared off the shelves pretty quickly. So if you ever see this for about $100, consider picking it up because you might get lucky and probably won't be able to find it again. But this one was released in 2021. It is a no age statement. It's non-chill filtered, no color ad added. Here's where it gets cool. It's got X bourbon, X Oloroso and an XPX Hogshead as well. So you're mixing a couple different kinds of sherry there. It's 46% and it's about $100. Now that introductions are out of the way, we're gonna do kind of a process of elimination here. So I'm gonna drink all six of these and I'm gonna pick which one I like the least and that one's eliminated. On to round two, do it again, all the way until we come up with the last two and then we pick our favorite. So I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get into it. Starting off with the 12. Man, I just love the smell of this. It reminds me of uh, like a green apple now and later. It's very sweet, it's apple-y, and it's just, it makes me want to eat it. <laughs> so, uh, when you smell that, it's like an oily, it's a rich flavor. It's just, everything about this is great. Cheers, everybody. Heavy on the citrus, good body, apple. Man, it's just a great whiskey. It's so good all around too, and for the price, that is one, no matter where this ends, I still think the 12 is just a stock it regardless. So, so good. 12 cast strength. This is a personal favorite of mine. It's one I just love every time I drink this. The bottle's almost gone. I've shared this a bunch of times. It's just so good. So this one will almost certainly make it past the first round, but we'll have to see. Um, I actually won't be upset if it loses because it's hard to find. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give it a nose. Vanilla, toffee, like a golden hay kind of thing, butterscotch, just so good. Brown sugar, it's like a very well-balanced nose on this. It's so, the, the ABV on this, I would actually expect it to be too high, but it carries the nose so perfectly. Cheers. It's just good. It's, um, I will say though, this has been sitting out for a little while and it's definitely dissipated some of the alcohol uh, just a bit. So it's not drinking nearly as hot as I was expecting. Some of the flavors I'm getting here are very typical of, of a red breast. I'm getting butterscotch. Um, I'm getting that copper pot still kind of spice. Um, not as heavy on the fruit as some of the other ones, but I would identify pear. Uh, kind of a nutty flavor as well. The viscousness of it is like perfect. Even the legs on this glass are wonderful. 
I will say that one is so good. <laughs> All right. The Redbreast 15. Now, this was one I really liked when I did a review of it a few weeks ago. Um, in fact, actually, I've done the 15, the Listau, and the 21 all this year. And that's not just in, in March, my usual Irish whiskey month. So, uh, it's been a good year. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and have a sip. Or a, a nose here. Red apples, hazelnut, kind of like an oak, um, caramel. It, I will say, actually, this is probably my least favorite of the three noses so far. But we'll keep going. Let's have a sip. Cheers. It's very smooth, very well balanced. It's creamy. It's got berries, um, cinnamon, uh, kind of like a red apple that's coming through on the flavor as well. I will say though, it's not as sweet as I was expecting and I do tend to like a very fruity kind of whiskey. I just, it's not like I'm looking for that. I'm more just saying it brought a lot of that to the nose and didn't fully deliver on the taste. So at the moment, that's definitely gonna be number three of the three, but we have three more to go. This one's the 21, and of course I poured it a little heavy because you gotta enjoy it. But the 21, I felt like was a bit of a disappointment when I did my review. It was fine. Um, it's just when you think about how expensive this is, I was not blown away by it. So let's go ahead and give it a nose. Nose is in line with the notes I had previously of tropical fruits and um, kind of toffee and like a like a golden hay kind of thing. Um, let's let's do another one. It is a little bit malty, which is interesting. It's It's got, uh, or it's bringing more of a heavy flavor to the nose. All right, let's go ahead and have a sip. Cheers. Fairly boring flavor. Not like terrible or anything, just thinking about this, seeing these things side to side now, I'm still baffled that this is the 21 year old version of this and that it costs as much as it does. None of these are bad. Like none of them are egregious whatsoever, but Tasting these side by side is really opening my eyes a bit to how overpriced the 21 is. Um, also, this is something I didn't mention before. I am actually going to try real hard not to have price factor into this because this is just a side by side of taste. That when the taste isn't blowing me away over this is like three times the price of this one, like that's that's a sad fact. All right, for uh, taste though, let's let's go back into this. It won't be the first rant that you hear in this episode, I'm sure. Um, vanilla, butterscotch, I don't know, caramel, like very, very mundane bourbon-y flavors. But there is some copper pot still in there. A little bit of the tropical fruit is coming in the finish. Um, it's okay. I'd say that one's probably my least favorite of the four so far, although the 15 is in the running. Onto the Red Breast Listau. This one is kind of that first, I wanted to include the two like heavily flavored ones because I just thought it'd be fun to have them in here. Um, plus, you know, I love seeing all these boxes on the table. They're just awesome. I, I love the, the colors, all that stuff. All right, let's go ahead and have a nose. All right, so very heavy on fruits, as you would expect, it's heavily sherried. It's got raisins, dates, figs, um, black cherries, it's also getting a little bit of cinnamon from the ex-bourbon, a uh, little honey. That's that's most of what I'm getting right off the bat. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Ooh, very sweet. Very, very sweet. Uh, it is tasty. <laughs> yes, it's tasty. Sorry. All right, so it's fruity. Um, it is more sugary sweet than I was expecting, whereas I, I was kind of thinking it would be like you know, lemony and cherry and blah, blah, blah. It's more just like, hey, sugar. It's almost, it's like drinking a very heavily sugared fruit drink, um, but it's delicious. All right, so that one's, that one's up there. I like that. Now for the Redbreast PX edition. This one is the one that I said was kind of hard to find, but I remember when I first had this, it was like an identity crisis in a glass. Not from the nose. The nose was actually a very easy nose to pick out. So actually let's just get into that. Yeah, it's actually, believe it or not, I'm, I'm remembering exactly how this smelled from over a year ago. This is like a mulled wine uh, where it smells like red wine with a, some sort of spices in it, in this case, cinnamon. But the taste was where I remember it feeling like there was an identity crisis. It was like fruity and chocolate and cinnamon and spices and just virtually everything. So let's go ahead and see if it's opened up or if it's still the same. Cheers. Mm. I'm remembering now. Not only did it have all those random things, it also tastes a whole lot like copper. And I actually wrote to Redbreast about this one, asking them, and they said, wow, that's surprising. That's not really supposed to be like that. Here's what we think that you should be getting. 
Um, and I determined that maybe I have a bad bottle. I'm not sure, but I don't taste the copper quite so much anymore. I do still taste it, but what I do taste is all those other things. So this has red cherry. It has like a mocha kind of chocolate thing going on. Um, let's see what else. Vanilla extract. It's very heavy on vanilla. Uh, almonds in there as well. You can actually taste them when you're exhaling a bit. Uh, this one's wild. All right, let's go ahead and make a decision. It shouldn't be a huge surprise. It's going to be between the 15 and the 21. One of these is not as good as the other, and I'm going to have one more sip of each just to give it one last chance. At the moment, I'll tell you, I'm leaning towards knocking the 21 out for a lot of reasons, but let's go ahead and try them side by side. So I'll do the 21 first. Yawn. Hmm, you know, I was leaning towards knocking the 21 out. I think I'm actually gonna keep the 21. The problem is I don't see it going to the end, um, but I am gonna knock out the 15, and here's the reason why. Compared to the 21, it does have more unique flavors, but it's not as well balanced as the 21. So when I'm thinking about what I want in a whiskey, what tells me a whiskey is really nice is flavors that are well balanced. 15 has flavors, but I don't think that they're well balanced. So we're gonna knock out the 15. And then there were five. So I'm gonna speed round this one, that way you don't have to watch me just redo everything. But I'm gonna do this real quick and then we'll recap here when I'm about to kick one out. You guys are gonna be surprised by this one because I certainly was. As I was drinking all of these, I started thinking about why I just knocked the 15 out. It is not well balanced. It is not just the perfect example of what red breast can do. And unfortunately, neither is the 12 cast strength. This is delicious. It is wonderful. I love everything about it, but it is not well balanced. It is not smooth. It is not everything that I expect it to be. One of these four will be, and I hate to say it, and I'm definitely going to drink this later. This one's just not going to cut it for me. I, I, I'm, I'm really upset about this. Goodbye, cast strength. Goodbye. Goodbye. That leaves us with the 12, the 21, the Lestau, and the PX edition. Let's figure it out. This one's a tough decision, and not just because of the one I, I actually, even just talking right now, I'm still not totally convinced which one I'm going to pick. So let me just tell you what my thoughts are right now. The 12 is holding up surprisingly well. I already knew this was a great whiskey and that it really could hold itself against some of the other ones in the lineup, but it's holding itself really, really well, like to the point where I'm starting to wonder if that one might win. Um, the 21 is actually holding up better than I expected, but mostly because it's not, actually, I don't even know what it is. Like something about it, it's just growing on me a little bit, I guess, but I don't know. With the Lestau, the Lestau is still holding up with the flavor. I mean, clearly I've had, what, like 10 or 12 of these so far. My tongue's starting to get burnt a little bit. And with the Lestau and the uh, PX edition, both of these are holding up. I can still taste a lot of fruit on both of them. Lestau is kind of doing better for me than the PX. So for the moment, I'm going to say the PX edition is getting eliminated this time. And this one is pretty close, but because it's so close with the Lestau, and I feel like it's just a lesser version of it, I mean, it's not the same, I get it, but it's not as good as the Lestau in my mind, so it's getting eliminated. All right, bye-bye. I stepped away for a few minutes just to give my palate a chance to kind of relax, and uh, as you could imagine, this is, this is a lot. There's some fatigue here. I don't know how distillers do it, but still. So this one's the 12, this is the 21, and this is the Lestau. All right, let's go ahead and have the 12. Okay, shockingly, you know, after stepping away for a little bit, this decision got a lot easier. And <laughs> it's, a, it's about time. The 21 is being eliminated this time. It simply just is not the best representation of Redbreast. So, sorry. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the fact that the 12 is even holding up against it says everything I need to know about whether I would actually ever purchase it again. And the answer being no. So, 
We now have the 12 versatile Estelle. These are about as different as they get. I'm gonna walk away for another few minutes and give my palette a chance to rest before I give the final verdict here. I can't believe it's come down to the 12 and the Lestau. This is mind blowing. Um, with the 12 and the Lestau, I gave myself a little bit of time. I wanted to totally refresh my palette. I drank a bunch of water. I rested for about a half hour. And now I'm gonna go into both of these. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the 12. Nose still smells like apples, still smells nice. Smells a little bit weak, if I'm being honest. The 40% is probably gonna hurt this one, but we'll see. Cheers. Yeah, so after now having like a few drinks or so, if I were say drinking this all night, by the time that I'm hitting that third or so drink, this is starting to taste a little bit weak. Um, I'm sure it's not, it's still 40%, it's still gonna get you there. But it does taste a little weak. So, something that could affect it. Let's go ahead with the Lestau. Nose on this is still very strong, uh, in a good way. Smelling of fruits, smelling of figs, dates, raisins, all that stuff. It's like a little toasty too, which is kind of nice. All right, cheers. So what I'm looking for here is for it to maintain that sweetness that it came out of the gate with, and it does. This one has a much nicer flavor. Now, here's my biggest question though. When I think of what do I think represents Redbreast the best, I mean, my answer is gonna be the Redbreast 12 because I think this, this has every right to call itself the quintessential Irish pot still whiskey, right? Or pot still Irish whiskey, which is exactly what they call themselves. It is fantastic. It is a great representation. It's both good for a beginner and somebody who just loves whiskey. Everything about this is wonderful. But when I'm doing both of these together, and all of these together, and I'm deciding which one I like the most, the Lestau is coming out as the winner. So, I am going to eliminate the 12. A little sad to do so, but it is what it is. And the Lestau is going to be the winner of this vertical, which I did not expect. I would not have called this. It probably would have been in my top three, but it would not have been the number one that I expected. I thought I was gonna end up picking the 12 cast strength. Um, and then I thought there was a chance that the regular Redbreast 12 would end up winning just because of whatever. I did not think the Lestau was going to win. Um, either way, this is great. If you get around to buying the Lestau, you, you certainly should. It is a very, very interesting flavor. It's sweet. It's very good for beginners. Um, it's good for people who can really pick a part of whiskey and pick a whole lot of things out of it. And just overall, I'm like, Hey, I'm a little flabbergasted because <laughs> I'm surprised that this one won. Uh, but I'm happy it did. I don't really care, to be honest. I'm just happy it did. All right. Anyway, this is the end of the episode. A um, couple of things real quick. I've got some uh, single barrel picks that are on whiskeydickpicks.com. So go check those out if you haven't already. Um, they will be shipping out very shortly. So definitely worth doing. And uh, aside from that, I also have a brand new product up on the whiskeydictionary.com. I'll leave that up to you guys to go discover it. So thank you all very much for joining me here and I look forward to this. Let me know in the comments what vertical you'd like me to do next. I'm thinking thoughts of Old Forester, but there's a whole lot of those. I might have to break it up into two. But let me know what you'd like to see and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.